Hey, I'm John with John Benton Model Fitness. Today, His clients were beauty queens, models, and influencers. If you're a model or trying to get into modeling... You with his online workout videos and pop-up events, John Benton became known as the Hip Whisperer, racking up more than 65,000 followers on social media. You're gonna go out and up. It's why attorney Alex Gonzalez says his client, Vanessa Ochoa, an L.A.-based model and influencer, connected with him. She had some trust in him because of his reputation. It's why she traveled to North Texas to work with him in August of 2020. The purpose of the visit was initially to film a workout session. According to this court document, Ochoa says Benton asked her to go into the bathroom of his studio to change into an outfit he gave her. While she was changing, she found a video camera behind a shampoo bottle that was, quote, positioned so that it could record Miss Ochoa while she was undressing. She says she left the studio, but started receiving texts and calls from Benton shortly after. Trying to make up an excuse uh, at the beginning. After that, it was trying to plead, beg, so that none of this would ever come out. But it did. In late September of 2021, more than a year later, Benton turned himself in to Flower Mound Police and was charged with invasive visual recording, a state jail felony in Texas. A statement posted to his company's Facebook page stated Benton was stepping away from the business and that all classes and consultations would be paused. In May of 2023, he pled guilty to the criminal charge and was given four years of probation. He also paid Ochoa a settlement in the civil suit. When he eventually pled guilty, uh, there was a great sense of relief. But shortly after relief came a notification. She actually got that email from his company saying, we're now a new company. More than a year before the case was closed, Benton's company's Facebook page posted a notice that it was becoming a new company that would be, quote, female-owned and female-led. That company is called Runway Fitness, and the CEO is Aaron Benton, John Benton's wife. If you type in johnbentonmodelfitness.com, you will be redirected to Runway Fitness's website. In a blog posted to that site that was later deleted, Runway Fitness posted that after a period of absence, we are delighted to announce that a former trainer and the founder of the model fitness method, John Benton, will be joining Runway Fitness to teach classes again. She's reading it and realizing that he hasn't learned his lesson. He's still out there, still working with girls like Vanessa, who might be in a vulnerable position and might not know about him because his name isn't on the company. The blog post ended with what it called a message from John. That included an apology, saying he placed the camera in the bathroom, quote, out of concern for a client who was struggling with drug-related issues, noting the client was not Vanessa Ochoa, and calling the incident an inappropriate decision that was spontaneous and dumb. Aaron Benton provided this statement, saying Runway Fitness was formed with no assistance or involvement from John. The statement goes on to say John Benton taught three virtual online classes, quote, due to demand from customers. But the company removed him after listening to concerns expressed from clients and the community. She also confirmed they are in the process of getting a divorce. Hi, Mr. Benton. This is Morgan Young with WFAA. Despite voicemail messages, multiple emails, and messages to his attorney, and phone conversations with family members, we have not been able to reach John Benton for a response. But what I found from looking into this issue for months is that while John Benton teaching fitness classes again may have been unpopular, he didn't violate any laws or break any rules because there aren't any. It's upsetting. It's really upsetting to see the lack of oversight in this industry. Dr. Deanna Melton co-wrote this research study published by the National Library of Medicine in 2008. It studied the fitness industry, saying it is, quote, largely unregulated and lacks a unified governing body. Fast forward to 2023, has that changed? Unfortunately not. Trainers can get a certification and often do to help with their own credibility, but there is no single standard for what it takes to get certified and no governing body at the state or national level to monitor a trainer's conduct. I reached out to the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation and was told the department, quote, does not regulate personal trainers or group fitness trainers and is not aware of any state agency that does. If you're a staff trainer, i.e. one that works for a business, then it's assumed that they're gonna do those criminal background checks and what have you, but then there's many people that go into private practice. I mean, nobody's overlooking them. The National Strength and Conditioning Association is one of a handful of accredited organizations that certifies personal trainers. You're on to something that I've been trying to get someone to recognize. Reed Wainwright is a former coach turned attorney who is on the Organization Standards and Guidelines Committee. We don't have the state licensing 
that can provide the oversight like you do have in a lot of other professions. You know, the board of nursing, the board of law examiners. You know, you go see a doctor occasionally, but you're with a certified personal trainer five, six, seven days a week, and there's no regulation for it, and there should be. The National Strength and Conditioning Association has its own code of conduct and procedure in place if any of its members break the law or violate its rules. Contract in, don't rotate out. But the most the association can do is remove a trainer from the organization and cancel their certification, which states don't even require. This is about all we have at this point. What is the opposition to it? Why has this not been able to happen? Because they don't understand. They don't think it's a problem. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics projects that the fitness training industry will grow by 14 percent over the next 10 years, much faster than the average job. You'd like to see Congress get involved, but states can definitely do it, especially in a place like Texas where sports and fitness are so prevalent. You've got to have some type of oversight because of the significant amount of time that each personal trainer spends with each and every person. For Vanessa Ochoa, it only took a few minutes for an assumed sense of safety to shatter. It's affected all aspects of her life, emotionally, physically, psychologically, professionally. But for an industry that's gone largely unregulated for decades, there are calls from within for change. We need to do better, for sure.